The first um, large equatorial came to telescope came to Cambridge not by accident. Um, it was a donation was made um, by the Duke of Northumberland in the 1830s of what was then an extremely large lens, um, an 11 three quarter inch lens made by the French optical designer Cochra. Now, extreme large lenses as large as that were extremely rare in those days because only a few years before had Joseph Fraunhofer perfected the technique um, of making um, big lenses. So this is one of the first really big refractors in the world. It was one of the largest in the world in, when it was completed in 1838. Um, it was soon superseded by the 15-inch at Kulkovo in Russia in, in, in 1839. And then a few years after that, um, Harvard in the USA had a, got, got a 15-inch as well. But um, the tube is made of wood. Um, and the, um, the, the lens is not the original lens. The original cultural lens is in storage. Um, it got slightly decayed over the years. And about 20 years ago, a new 12 inch lens was made by the skilled optical engineer Jim Heisen, who some of you may know. And the, um, this, the present uh, telescope has a focal ratio of f20, which is not a common f ratio we see in, in refractors. And the mount, however, was actually designed by George Airy. Um, he didn't trust um, instrument makers to do the proper design for a mount for a big telescope, so Airy designed himself. Airy was a very good um, mechanical engineer as well as an astronomer, um, and one of his relatives um, was in charge of the engineering works, so, so he knew a lot about mechanical engineering. And if, if you've, any of you have ever been to the old Royal Observatory in Greenwich, you'll notice the similarity in the design of the 28-inch Thompson refractor. They're the same kind of mount, big wooden tube. Again, it was George Airy. The, the, this, so that, the, this mount was all um, built in 1838, and so was that chair. Now, as you, many people know, in 1846, um, a young mathematical prodigy called John Cooch Adams had um, calculated the, base, the, the, the possible position of an exterior planet beyond Uranus um, on the basis of irregularities that had been observed in the position of Uranus, which suggested that it was being moved by the gravitational influence of some undetected outer planet. Unbeknown to um, Adams, uh, the French director of the French uh, the Paris Observatory, Urban Le Verrier, um, had also calculated a position for Neptune. But uh, John Cooch Adams got the, did the calculations about a year before Le Verrier and presented them to George Airy, who allegedly um, ignored them, shoved them in a drawer, and didn't even reply to his letter. Um, the, the problem with Airy was not so much that he was was not so much that he was a sort of bigot or he, that, that that he refused to um, talk to this sort of young upstart. It was the fact that the, the duty, the first duty of Greenwich Observatory, as he saw it, was to provide a timekeeping service and, and do sort of utilitarian type of astronomy and not go looking for planets. This is not part of the workings of the, of the, of the official observatory paid for by the taxpayer. And this sort of thing was left to the universities, a place like Cambridge. Um, now, so it was, um, so Adams had to go um, a mile down the road um, in Cambridge to uh, the director of the observatory, then Plumian professional astronomy, James Chalice, 